Hi Sagis, how are you guys doing? Welcome back to Sagittarius Tarot and another reading. Let us begin. Now, let us see what this reading is about. Nice manifestation. Upright and believe in magic upright. So, this whole reading will be exploring the relationship that you have with yourself, with your powers of manifestation and with magic. First of all, I'm going to be reading the messages. Manifestation, be very honest and clear about what you wish to manifest in your life. Now, write it down on paper. Manifestation, step one. Believe in magic. Open your eyes and see the magic that's all around in nature. The fairy of the northern light says you are part of nature, so you are magical too. And so these two cards talk about how you are connected to nature, to the universe, to creation, and how everything you see around you is inter interconnected. And so this is nature's way or life's way of showcasing you all the possibilities that you can embrace and manifest and see happen in your life right like so you look at all the wonders of nature you look at all the accomplishments of other fellow human beings you look at like science and how everything unfolds and how everything is possible you look at all the creations around you and this is a reminder that you have access to, to that you can do that you can you have all the tools to do it you are connected and all you need to do is to believe in yourself. And the manifestation message affirms that because it says that the first step in manifesting is first and foremost being honest and clear about what you want to manifest, then writing it down to cement this intention, and then go about your life to start looking for ways to accomplish that. So this is really all about your relationship with your manifesting powers. How much do you believe in yourself? Um, how much do you believe in the possibilities? How much do you believe in what you preach? Um, I love this. And they're both upright. So that's amazing. That's amazing, amazing, amazing. Now, um, let us look at what is your role in this relationship? What sort of role do you play? You get the Queen of Swords upright. And the Wheel of Fortune or of the Year in this case in reverse. And so your role in this is to seek the truth. The Queen of Swords is someone who seeks the truth. Is someone who communicates is someone who shares all the wisdom that she has. So you, really your role is, whenever you do believe in yourself or whenever you do manifest, is to share what you learned with humanity, to share your experiences with the world, whether that is through blogging, vlogging, social media, videos, your art, um, expressing yourself, photography, painting, talking, you name it, right? All the ways that you can express sometimes by doing whatever your profession is or whatever your hobby is. Your role is not only to believe in yourself, but to inspire others to believe in themselves. It is not only to manifest, but to inspire others to manifest as well. It is not only to be very honest and clear about what you want, but to help others be very honest and clear about what they want, right? And you have a role here to aspire and inspire others. And that is very, very beautiful. And with the wheel of the year in reverse here, it is telling me that your circumstances or your fate or your destiny or all the experiences in your life that had led you up to this point um, had a purpose. And the purpose is for you to prove to others that against all odds, with your free will and with your free spirit and with your honest and 
clear communication and with your high belief and high self-esteem and with your belief in magic and in manifestation, you are able to show people that even if the wheel of the year has always been reversed, you somehow went against all odds and realized something of yours, realized the dream, believed in yourself, loved yourself, manifested something. And so really here comes the fabric of a very aspirational story, the story of your life um, and how you can use that story to help others um, in their life's journey. So the obstacles or challenges or lessons or stuff that happened throughout your life are going to be the perfect example to illustrate um, all your magnificence, right? And with the Queen of Swords too, this is someone who is very eloquent and charming and master communication. And so also your role here is to keep on learning and keep on getting better. Maybe learn more languages to get your message across more cultures, maybe learning different tones, maybe getting even better at expressing yourself because all of this is going to help others also not be afraid to use their voice. So maybe they hear your voice and how comfortable you are with it. And so they start also using their voice and expressing themselves out there, right? They hear your words. Um, they hear you when you're blunt or when you're expressing your truth and you're proud of it. And so this will inspire them to do that in their lives as well. And so you really are here the inspirer, the communicator, the um, sort of um, like motivational speaker, sort of, right? Doesn't have to be literal. So that's amazing. And you've been, you've been dealt a bad hand, right? Like by all means, you've been dealt a bad hand, but, um, it is thanks to that, that because maybe if everything was perfect and great, maybe you would have never believed in magic. Maybe you would have never, you would have taken things for granted. Maybe you wouldn't, I don't know, have done all this work to be able to figure out what you want and decide to manifest. And you wouldn't have developed all these amazing communication skills because maybe you were just too comfortable to, you know, to explore all that. So I don't know what's your story here. How is that going to play um, in the big picture of your life? But there is that energy right here. Now let us look at what did life or circumstances or other people play a role in this relationship with magic that you have and with manifestation and with your you know self-love self-belief self-esteem how did others or circumstances or life play a role in shaping that relationship you have whom do you need to forgive in reverse? New home, upright. I'm going to be reading the messages first before we analyze. So, whom do you need to forgive in reverse? As you release old anger or resentment, you will find that your wishes will come true. New home, moving is a step in the right direction for you. So, what does that tell me? Okay, this falls in the life or the partner's or other people's role that they played in shaping your relationship, right? With believing in yourself or in magic and in manifestation. So, first of all, I feel that somehow life or Mm, like either life or your romantic partner or friends or family or someone you know or circumstances or whatever sort of offered you a new home. This could be literal, like they helped you move out from one place to another or um, like to somewhere that you always wanted to be in, right? And so hence they helped you believe in your manifestation power and believe in magic and believe that regardless of that hard path you've been on, 
you were able to manifest your reality, right, with their help. This could also mean that um, it sort of like moved you to a new, like, home. It could be like a new country, right, and all that. But it could also be like a new sort of tribe or family or space. It could be even like an online space, right, like with community and stuff. So there is something like where you feel that, you know, life or other people or circumstances really did play a role to help you feel loved and supported. And um, especially when it came to finding your home or moving in that step, towards that step and, and guiding you and showing you things. Um, but also, I see you here that they also like, these are like the, so we're gonna, I see here like a situation of yin and yang, right? And so these are like people who played a positive role or circumstances that played a positive role in this. Now here comes the other batch, um, which are the people or the circumstances that were negative and that because they did represent certain obstacles, helped you help push you to believe more in yourself and more in magic and to to manifest because you did not want that energy so it sort of like played like a cat a role of a catalyst to guide you towards that right um and this these are people that you do not feel the need to forgive that they these are circumstances maybe life was unfair towards you maybe you met a lot of um, unethical um, and how how plenty is there of these people unethical people they're like everywhere <laughs> so maybe you did you know right like meet these people um, and so for me it feels like instead of instead of focusing like the way for you to sort of release that energy was not in it wasn't like in release learning to forgive and releasing you know resentment towards them no they sort of like were the fuel for you to sort of prove yourself worthy or um despite of them or in spite of that or whatever it is it was literally the fuel the anger the resentment all that that really pushed you to be like, oh, fuck you, fuck you all, fuck everyone, <laughs> fuck that, right? I'm going to believe in myself and make something out of myself despite all the shittiness out in the world type of situation, okay? So you see here, like, you have had, I don't know if it's equitable, but you know what I'm saying, like, it feels like you have had your share of, like, people who offered you sort of, like, the feeling of a home and, or helped you move into, um, that home because this is not talking about like a established home this is like moving to a new home so maybe this is like during your trips people have opened their doors for you others were shitty as fuck maybe whenever you did were searching for a job some people were supporting you and helped you land the job others were actually like trying to you know fuck you up and sour your reputation all that and so in any situation, right, like when you're looking for a community, the same, whenever you are expressing yourself, there's like supportive people, there's just people. And so what I'm trying to say is like both of these people, they or both of these circumstances, also when if we're talking circumstances, it's like positive lucky circumstances when things came easy or serendipitously um, or at the last minute and then other circumstances where literally everything seemed to be blocked. And so both of these played an equal role in helping you and allowing you and push you to open your eyes and see really the magic around you and see how you're connected to everything and see how you are the asset, you are the magic, you are expensive. And because of that, you're able to tap into that manifestation power in your life and to manifest and realize things that you wanted or want. Now, moving on, we're going to be looking um, at some of that past foundation for this relationship like where is all of this relationship with belief and manifestation rooted within you see only love upright
child upright. Yeah, it is rooted in childhoods. <laughs> like everything. So we're going to read the child card and then see only love. Child, you care deeply about children and they readily respond to your love. I'm going to read this fast because sometimes it doesn't, it's not the literal um, explanation that I want to, you know, um, explore. Uh, you care deeply about children and they readily respond to your love. All children, including your own inner child, require love, affection, and attention. We can clear and open your heart and schedule so that you can give more time and energy to the children who need you. So first of all, this is saying that all of this was rooted in your childhood. Um, and it's like at some point in your childhood, you decided to only see love. It says, look past the seeming errors and mistakes and misunderstandings and see only the love within each person, including yourself. Your resolute focus upon the love that underlies every situation brings about healing in undreamed of ways. Yeah, so this talks really about um, a hard childhood um, where you have been dealt a really bad hand, right? Um, this could meant that you may, might have felt neglected. Maybe you have lost dear people around you. Maybe you have met so many jerks and assholes and bully, uh, bulliers and morons and jerks and thieves and murderers and whatever you want to call it, right? Like all of that or some of that, right? Maybe you have gone through trauma. Maybe you have gone through so many of things that ended up shaping you. And so somewhere along those lines, you have decided um, ever since you were a kid that despite the wheel of the year universe, despite all the bad things or the negative things surrounding you or people or experience, you decided to look at that as the fuel to only see love and peep in people and in situation to, to have faith. And that's why you became this hopeless romantic and this positive person because still you always try to look at that silver lining. You always try to look past the seeming errors and mistakes and misunderstandings. And you have had, boy, you have had quite of those in your life. And even with yourself, you have learned to also forgive yourself and be kinder to yourself. Your life was rough, Sajis. But, I mean, at least what you got out of it is this becoming this excellent communicator, right? And somehow being able to move and experience different homes and different directions as well. I don't like in because homes is not in literal sense, right? Different directions in life and different tribes. And thanks to all that, you were able, in spite of it, thanks to it, to you know tap into this these two energies which are beautiful. A lot of people maybe don't have that in their lives, right? They don't believe in magic. They don't think everything's connected. They they maybe they don't feel they have that magic touch. Now, let us look at the current states, state of this relationship, right? Because this was the root. And so, this could also, by the way, be a lot of neglect because if you look at the mother figure here, with the heart, she's looking towards one kid and the other kid is just, you know, thrown to the back. <laughs> but this doesn't have to be neglect from the nuclear family. This could be just neglect in overall. Or not equitable love or not equitable give and take or being used and abused and bullied and all that. And the funny thing is like in the picture of the child, here I see you like being cared for, you know, as you were younger, younger. And so it looks like as if you were, when you, when you were newborn, you know, that was love, but it's as if you grow old and not a lot, like that's still childhood, right? Um, is when shit started to hit the fan. Let's look at the current state of your relationship with magic and manifestation. Yeah, it is the magician in reverse. You're going through shit, Sajis. You felt you lost your magical touch. And maybe that's why you want to, you know, try to claim that back. 
Because currently, things are not good with you. Trust, Six of Wands. Yeah, I think this is a dark night of the soul type of situation or a long or like a sudden crisis that has been unfolding for a while and now it like sort of happened. It could be a tower moment. It could be um, things piling up until you just can't take it anymore. So something happened within you where you snapped or you lost your ability to feel that you're the magician. Like you feel that you're no longer able to manifest anything in your life. And so it frustrates you because you've had it rough. And so the only thing that made you or that make you happy or make you feel connected and loved is to feel connected and to feel that you can manifest anything you want. And so the second that you feel disconnected from this magical power and the second that where you feel like you're no longer able to manifest anything is when you really lose it and you lose you lose belief in yourself you lose your sense of joy you you lose a lot because that is what you're really all about right you you haven't been giving a lot more um you're the type of person who yeah like just that's what you have, your communication and then your beliefs and your magical power. So when that's gone, you know, sucks. And so what it's saying you is like there's a message of hope here that this is temporary though. Because you got the trust card and the six of wands. And the six of wands talks about success, right? Success and conquering um, tough things and having you know, being uplifted by the community or by a group of people or witnessing success and being validated and all of that. All you need to do is trust the process, trust life as much as it's very hard because it's very hard to trust, right? When you're no longer believing in magic, when you're no longer manifesting and, but still hang on, hang on Saji, because you know, it came up right with the magician in reverse and it can only tell you that there's hope. Now, the interesting part is like, let's see how this hope will unfold because we're going to look at the looming future of your relationship with magic and manifestation. Hopefully and supposedly it should be amazing or great or better, right? Because we had the trust and the six of wands, which is success here in the current state. So the future must be bright. Let us look at it. Come on, Saji needs that. It needs that universe. Reflection number four. Sustenance number seven. Mm. So, this is the Lord Ganesha cards. And yeah, here I see you really reflecting on fertility because we see here the grenadine on fruit and on your own magnificence and independence and individuality with the peacock feather. And so it, it looks like in the future you are trying to really reflect on how can I get connected again to magic. How can I do all that? Because I'm trying to figure out what I exactly want to manifest and how can I manifest it? Because I want something solid. Reflection has the number four and four is the number of security and stability. You want to be able to manifest something secure um, that can guarantee your independence in order for you to be fertile again and just be peacocking in all your glory. And you get with it. Number seven, which is sustenance. And sustenance is all about having, um, having enough resources to, um, to eat, to go out, having enough safety to pay the bills, having enough um, of everything, right? Being, like, being at a point where you don't have to worry about stuff. And, and feeling, you know, well-nourished. And they both came up right, which is great. 
And I feel that you're really trying to reflect on how to manifest abundance to be really, with, to be like, you know, correct with you and believe in magic, right? To do all that. Because I think that's what you want to manifest. You want to manifest abundance. So maybe you've been going through a rough financial situation for the last couple of years. Um, and this is number seven sustenance, which is a number of spirituality. And in astrology, it can be a number of partnership. So whether this is thanks to spiritual work or whether this is through partnering with someone, I'm leaning more towards spiritual work or practices. Yeah. You really wanna, you're really reflecting on that. And that's where I see you, you know, heading towards. You still haven't figured it out like all the plan, right? Like it didn't all unfold. You didn't really, you don't have all the exact steps of what needs to be done. But you do know that this is what's next for you. The second you snap out of this um, reverse energy in magic, and the second you're able to trust and feel uplifted somehow um, by life, you're going to be taking a long look in the mirror to reflect on what led you here, where, why are you here, why are you in this current state, what led there? How can you prevent that from happening? And what are the next steps to do to be in a more sustenant place? Because you want to go back to chasing philosophical ideas, to chasing spiritual ideals, to teach, to coach, to spread joy, to touch other people's lives. But you can't do that if you're always worried about sustenance. So you got to achieve that financial independence you gotta achieve that security that safety you gotta achieve that success in order to continue and maybe that because i told you like through spiritual practices so maybe that is the next logical step where you you will actually you know just like i told you before whenever you did explore new directions there were a couple of people every single time that were able to play a role in telling you like in facilitating that move right and there was those people who like fucked you up and pushed you to take that move anyhow because they were nasty as fuck and it's because of them you had to do the move and so it was all that right then and right there that helped you right in your relationship with magic and and manifestation so i think now trying to achieve your financial goals and succeeding is what will make you believe in magic sort of again. But it sort of like has to happen at the same time. You get what I'm saying? Like there's not like this before that. It's sort of unfolding at the same time. But that's what's going to solidify it. That's what's going to happen. Like once, right? Like once you have achieved all that, you're going to look back and be like, damn, yeah. And while you're doing it, you're going to be like, I believe in magic. I'm opening my eyes and you're going to look at all the abundance surrounding you and you're going to say like everything is connected and all this abundance is surrounding me so I just I should just tap into it and it should work for me too right and then you're going to be clear about what you want be honest write it all down and start manifesting the future is great Saji you just need to figure it out and I think you're set um, it's not easy, but you're set to finally believe in yourself again and how awesome you are, Saji. All right. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Thank you for liking this video. It shows me that you appreciate my content. Thank you for sharing my video by clicking the share button. Thank you for leaving me down comments below. They help me connect and bond with you. Thank you for following my Instagram page, Easy Simple Bliss. You will find there so many things, um, extra materials that I don't publish here on YouTube. Um, so feel free to follow that page and see what every day brings for you. Um, and thank you for everyone who already subscribed here. You support me a lot. If you didn't, please click at the end of this video on the Sagittarius Tarot icon and subscribe to this channel. It's for free and it helps my work reach a wider audience. Thank you so, so, so much. 
I love you, my Sagis. Stay blessed, aligned, and connected. Mm -hmm. Kisses.